It's been a pretty long time since Great Wall Motors or GWM first entered the Philippines. And for a long time too, they kind of disappeared for a while. But now they are back and they are back with products that are much better compared to before. And this car right beside me is no exception. This is the 2023 GWM Haval H6 DHT Supreme. This is a fully hybrid vehicle. Today, let's take a look at this car and see just how far GWM has come. This being a hybrid vehicle, let's talk about the fuel economy first. In the city, this car does a pretty amazing 12.8 kilometers per liter and on the highway, you can do 18.3 kilometers per liter, which is truly pretty amazing for a car of this size. And this amazing fuel economy figures is due to this engine and battery electric motor combo right here. What you have is a 1.5 liter turbocharged gasoline engine paired to an electric motor, making a total of 243 horsepower and 530 newton meters of torque. So you can just imagine all the torque and all the wheel spin that you can do with this supposedly family vehicle. It is a pretty fun car to drive too. We'll take a look at that later on. For your transmission, you do get a seven speed DCT, but it's also some sort of a dedicated hybrid transmission. Now that we have fuel economy and the powertrain out of the way, let's talk about how this car looks. And let's start with its color. So this is very similar to the storm gray that you would see in some Japanese PPVs, seven seater PPVs. I'm not sure if you know what I'm talking about, but yeah, do your research. It looks so similar to that even in real life. I love this color. And now the grill. Now this entire segment, it just looks very modern, very sophisticated. You have lots of these like chrome accents on it and there's just so much geometric patterns on it. So it reminds me therefore of a French brand this time. What I'm not a big fan of with this front end is the Havel logo. The Havel lettering, it's fine, but the color behind it, the cyan, it looks kind of weird. Anyway, you get LED headlights, LED DRLs, LED fog lights, and also these fog lights too, they can turn on depending on if you use your turn signals or if you turn your steering wheel, it is quite clever. Parking sensors too, right there down below. On the side of the vehicle, you can see just how big this car is. Technically, this is a compact crossover SUV, but it's taller, wider, and longer compared to a Toyota RAV4. So this is more like a mid-size vehicle, so you can just imagine all the value that you can get and the space that you would get with this car, which we'll check out later. The rim setup for this Supreme trim, 19 inches, also blacked out. Get the lower trim, you get 18 inches. And just here, extra black accents to give you an extra sportier touch. Now going towards the rear of the vehicle, it also has that very sophisticated and also modern look with this full with light bar. They spell out Haval for you, but just to remind you that Haval isn't really the name of this vehicle. This is more like the sub-brand. They still give you the H6 badge right here and the HEV badge or the Hybrid Electric Vehicle badge. What I also love about this rear end is this like third brake light up top. That looks pretty futuristic. Now let's open up this tailgate and it is power operated. Pretty fast too, honestly. And in here, this is where the whole mid-sized sized vehicle really comes in. The trunk you get here, or the boot area, is pretty big. Unfortunately, you don't get any more storage under here because this is where your hybrid batteries are located. But still, this is pretty big as it is. I think this is even class leading. And in case that's still not enough, you can even fold down your rear seats 60-40. Now we come on inside and we check the door first. Not bad. I wouldn't say it's amazing, but the sound is not bad at all. Now, once you are here in the driver's seat, first thing you'll notice is just how wide the seats are. You know that the bolsters are not too aggressive, so this car is really a comfort-oriented car, and that will reflect on the driving later on, so stay tuned for that. The rest of the materials in here, they are also pretty good. So for example, your dashboard, it may not look like it's soft touch, but it really is, and it is pretty thick too. This uh, two-tone brown interior part of it, well, this is covered in leather, but that isn't soft touch. On the side, you also get extra soft touches, and even where your elbow will hit, those are all soft touch materials. Now, just one word of caution, if you would like to get this car in this particular exterior gray, you can't get it with this two-tone interior. It's gonna have an all-black interior, so this two-tone effect is only 
for this demo unit. Now, the steering wheel, I also love it because you have all your like buttons laid out very simply. You don't have your adaptive cruise control buttons right there. It is located in a separate stock, so that really clears up these buttons. However, what I don't like about the steering wheel is I find it a little bit too thin. So if you're a fan of cars from the 90s with super thin steering wheels, then this may be your cup of tea. Anyway, your screen. So you have two screens in this vehicle. First of all, you have a 10.25 inch digital instrument cluster, which is also pretty easy to read and also pretty easy to configure. And on the center, you have a 12.25 inch touchscreen. This comes with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, but you do have to use a wire. What you don't need a wire for though is phone charging because this car comes with a wireless charging pad. Oh, also for another cool thing with this, you even get a heads up display, which is totally not expected from a car of this class. Moving on, you have this rotary shifter, really easy to use, don't worry about it. Electronic parking brake, auto hold, and then we go back to the seats. Now, these seats are power adjustable, not just for the driver's side, but also for the passenger side. And you even get lumbar adjustments. Again, I really love that touch. On top is a sunroof, but the only slight complaint I have with it is that you do have to like hold down the button to open the shade. There's no like one touch function from it, which is something I haven't seen in cars for quite some time now. The panoramic sunroof, it is pretty big though, but I mean, come on GWM, but I guess they did have to cut costs somewhere. What's super impressive about this car though is aside from having six airbags, it is super safe because this car comes with adaptive cruise control. You have traffic jam assistance, which is basically low speed adaptive cruise control. You get lane keep assist, lane departure warning, forward collision warning, cross traffic alert, and the list goes on. We'll see more of that in the driving segment later on. For the rear seats, first let's talk ingress. And ingress is pretty easy. If you have elderly relatives, they're not gonna have any issues because they don't really need to climb on top of it. They kind of just slide in right there. The height is pretty perfect. Now for the door thud, not bad, way better than the front. And back here is honestly one of the biggest highlights of the Haval H6 because space here is simply amazing for its class. Again, it's even larger compared to a Toyota RAV4. Look at this, your legroom is great. Your headroom, despite the panoramic sunroof, is also pretty excellent. And just the overall seats too, they are pretty comfortable. Five support is good, the width is also good. And for toys, you also get a couple of them. So you have two air vents, you have two of these like USB-A ports, not C, but you know, a lot of people still use A. And you even have this center armrest with two cup holders. Finally, if you wanna seat three people in this car, Oh yeah, that is definitely doable because number one, the car is really wide and your floor, it is almost completely flat. So now we drive the GWM Haval H6 DHG Supreme Hybrid Electric Vehicle. And driving this, it's one of the most impressive cars I've driven so far because usually when you drive one of these vehicles and they're hybrids, you know they're tuned only exclusively for efficiency, right? But this car does that so well plus more so let's start with that the main aspect of it so it's very fuel efficient it's incredibly quiet in the city it has this series parallel combined hybrid system very similar to what you would get with the toyota by the way that just cleverly selects the proper driving mode for you it knows when to pick battery it knows when to use both the engine and the battery at the same time and it also knows when to just use the engine it it honestly is one of the smoothest hybrid systems i've ever tried and speaking of the smoothness too the way that the engine or the battery cuts in it's almost seamless. You can barely feel the engine kick in, come into life. It's quiet, there's not much vibrations. I love this vehicle. Also speaking of quietness and vibrations, it's super quiet both in town and on the highway. You barely hear any wind noise, any tire noise, none of that. And even at idle, even when the engine's running, it's also super smooth, so very impressive. But the very moment you want to drive this car fast, having that instant torque of a hybrid, you just floor it, and it really does kick you back to your seat. This car can easily get you to extra legal speed, so you have to be very careful. But the good thing is you have that heads up display to always remind you not just of your current speed, but even of the speed limit of the road you are driving it, because it even has traffic 
traffic sign recognition. But just because you have all that instant torque, all 530 newton meters of it, is it a sporty vehicle? Well, not at all. This car is a heavy vehicle and even if you have your hybrid batteries down there on the floor at the rear, it still doesn't have a too low center of gravity. So if you do push this car over corners, well, you're still gonna receive a lot of roll and it isn't a too pleasant experience. This really is meant to be driven like a sane human being. And with that, there's absolutely no issues with it because also, when you are driving this sanely, you're gonna be very impressed too with the way it rides. It's not jumpy in any way, it's not choppy. It is it's just ever so slightly firm, just enough to make sure that you don't get motion sickness. But the closest car I can think of, a mainstream vehicle that rides exactly like this Haval H6 is the current generation Toyota Camry. It has that hint of firmness, unlike older Camrys, but it just is so comfortable. No one will say no to the ride of this vehicle. In fact, I've had other people ride in this car, my family, and even they are pretty impressed with how it rides. Usually, people in their like, you know, 40s and 50s, they're not a big fan of sporty vehicles or this very futuristic looking vehicle, but not only were they impressed with how it looks, they were also super impressed with the way it rides. This vehicle comes with what's called an e-pedal. So, you can technically drive this with one pedal alone. You don't need to step on your brakes anymore unless it's an emergency. The very moment you lift off the throttle, all that regenerative braking kicks in and just slows you and it even works until a complete stop. Finally, the adaptive cruise control. It works excellently not only on the highway but even inside the city, even in low city speeds. And it's also one of the least jerky systems I've ever tried. Because usually when the car in front of you starts slowing down, these adaptive cruise control systems, they would abruptly hit the brakes for you. It can still do that in an emergency, but for your daily driving, for normal situations, it slows down just smoothly. That really is the best way to describe this car. It's just smooth through and through. But if there's one annoying thing I have with the Aval H6, it's the camera system that you have. So it comes with a 360 camera as well as side cameras for you not to curb your wheels. But when you turn on your signals or when you turn your steering wheel a certain degree, it comes on. And so if you are using Waze, for example, through your CarPlay, you can no longer see your ways. And also, if for example, you want to change the drive modes or the fan speed of this vehicle, which you do have to use the screen for, the very moment you exit Apple CarPlay, even if it's wired, it has this glitch where you can't really go back to it anymore unless you unplug your phone and put it back again. Slightly annoying. So it's pretty efficient, it's so spacious, and it is also surprisingly fun to drive. So now, how much does the GWM Haval H6 Supreme cost? Well, you'll be pretty surprised. It only costs 1,883,000 pesos. And if you ask me, that is pretty good value for how much car you're getting. And also, just in case you have any apprehensions about this brand, well, I'll tell you a little story. My grandfather won in a raffle 12 years ago a Great Wall Haval H5 and till this day it still works pretty well.